Why did we do this study? Well, when the Volkswagen Dieselgate scandal broke in September of 2015, there was a study published by MIT about five weeks after that event that estimated the health impacts of that in the United States. For those of us at the ICT who had been working on this topic for so long, we were interested not just in that, but in the impact in Europe. Because Volkswagen, by its own admission, was selling its cars globally, we also knew we needed to look beyond Europe. We needed to look globally. So we knew we wanted to do assessments outside the US and that are global. But finally, we knew that cars at the global scale are not really the core problem. We've had problems in the past with excess NOx from trucks and buses, particularly Euro 4 and 5 trucks and buses. Those are previous generation emission standards. So at the end of the day, what we decided to do internally within the ICT was really to work with Susan Annenberg. And literally within three days of her initial inquiry, I was able to pull a team together and the resources together to launch this project that looks globally at the excess NOx emissions problem, both for cars and for trucks, without explicitly identifying what the causes of those excess NOx emissions are, but really to take the real world em emissions measurement data to quantify the burden in the real world of excess diesel burden. This study is pretty innovative in that we link together a number of different types of models to estimate the public health impacts of the change in, uh, in emissions. And so we link together models of uh, uh, vehicle emissions and uh, atmospheric chemistry with uh, satellite using satellite ob observations. And we link those with damage models, societal damage models in terms of the health impacts, climate impacts, and crop impacts. Air pollution uh, causes a lot of damage to vegetation including on crops. So we wanted to know not just the public health impacts, but the climate impacts and the crop impacts as well. Perhaps the most surprising finding of the study is the dominance of heavy duty trucks and buses in contributing to the excess NOx health burden. Uh, light duty vehicles like cars and vans have gotten the most attention in the media, especially with the Volkswagen diesel gate scandal. Um, but heavy duty trucks and buses have very substantial excess NOx emissions, partly because there's a higher share of dieselization in the heavy duty fleet, and only a few countries have a very high dieselization in light duty fleet, for example, the European Union and India. In the United States, where so much attention has been given to diesel cars, in particular to Volkswagen, the burden of excess diesel NOx from cars is actually much lower than from trucks and buses in the United States. Our study found that for every one premature death caused by diesel cars in the United States, there are an additional 10 caused by trucks and buses. So considering the magnitude of response to the Volkswagen issue, in fact, in the United States, the burden is significantly larger for diesel trucks and buses and it also highlights how Europe has failed to respond to a burden that is significantly larger for diesel cars than it is here in the United States. One thing that surprised me from our results is that the, the impacts of excess diesel NOx emissions are really substantial in Europe. About 10% of all ozone-related premature deaths in Europe are attributable to excess NOx emissions from diesel vehicles. And that's really quite a substantial percentage when you consider that this is not the full transportation sector, this is just diesel vehicles, and this is not all diesel emissions, this is really just excess NOx from diesel, diesel vehicles. So the fact that about 10% of ozone-related deaths in Europe could have been avoided if diesel vehicles emitted the same levels that they show in certification testing that really was quite substantial.